What's up YouTube? Finally back with a new video. Sorry I haven't lived up to my promise that I made earlier this year by doing one every month or so. Uh, I honestly almost just gave it up completely. I even canceled my Premiere Pro subscription and had pretty much given up on it. But recently I kind of decided eh, I kind of miss doing it and seeing new followers and stuff come in on YouTube kind of lit a little fire under me so I'm gonna give it another go hopefully I stick with it a little bit better this time uh, I'm gonna change things up a bit I want to do more videos about maybe the new tools around my shop and uh, just kind of overview of what's going on and a few detailed stuff but not just projects outline or not just videos outlining outlining the projects I'm working on at the time so uh, we'll see how it goes and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Today, I want to talk about this bandsaw and uh, why I got it and what I had to do to it to get it the way I like it. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you saw that I took Bob Ullman's folder knife making class with Ranger Made Knives and uh, it was awesome came home with an awesome knife learned a lot of stuff and I plan to talk about that a little bit later in another video but the on day one I got to cut the blade out CPM 154 blade I think is around uh, 3 16th thickness using his jet metal cutting bandsaw and it was a night and day difference between uh, compared to using uh, a porta band swag table like a lot of us knife makers use so I uh, after using it I got like total tool envy and so I got home and I started researching and I realized that new saws like the one he had now run anywhere for like 2200 for a metal slash wood cutting bandsaw or to upwards of 5000 for a dedicated metal cutting bandsaw and that was out of my budget at the time started looking on Facebook marketplace and I found this guy just down the road and decided to go take a look at it it was old as it says uh, there's a date here 1963 from Lubbock ISD and it has all like the Lubbock ISD uh, inventory tags and stuff on it so that was kind of neat it was evidently in one of their wood shops so that was pretty cool and uh, when I saw it I saw the size of it I pretty much knew it was coming home with me it was uh, it, you know it ran well and I was like sure it was kind of a pain in the butt to, to haul but weighs well, about 600 pounds and it's awkward but we got it here a friend of mine helped me out and we used his trailer and it wasn't too bad it's a wood cutting bandsaw, but it had a VFD on it, and uh, I knew, actually let's take a look at that real quick. Uh, this is the VFD it had on it, uh, not familiar with it. It worked, uh, but like, it was real violent on the motor, start stopping, it was like, it'd shake the whole thing and I'd have to put my foot down on the bottom because the motor would hang out the bottom and I could hold the motor down and stop it from doing that, but I really did not like the way it behaved. On top of that, it's it's a 220 in and then of course 220 out to the three phase motor that it was using, but the guy didn't have 220, so he was using this beast, which is a transformer from uh, 110 to 220. So I just didn't like that whole setup. I don't like, I don't know. So I got a VFD that I'm familiar with, a KV VFD that I'm familiar with, and uh, went with that. Before I got the VFD, I decided to give it a try still. So with the old VFD, I slowed it down. And when I slowed it down enough to cut steel properly, it wasn't, it was didn't have enough torque. So, but when it had enough torque, when I sped it up to have enough torque, it burned up a blade like quick. So I had to uh, come up with a new solution. And this is what I did. I started doing some research to try to figure out what blade speeds I needed. And I came up with about 100 foot per uh, minute 
for cutting stainless and around 120 for cutting high carbon. So with that information, I found online a, a bandsaw uh, speed calculator, basically. You input the size of the wheel in here, basically this is the wheel size here and the wheel coming off I know it's a little bit ghetto but and the wheel coming off your motor, the pulley coming off the motor and then the pulley that drives the bottom wheel once you enter all that information it calculates the speed you have and then I was able to also input I was able to calculate what kind of gear reduction I need so I came up with 30 to 1 gear reduction for this saw I uh, found one online it was cheap uh, it's only rated for a half horsepower motor but uh, I decided to give it a try. Uh, the larger ones ran closer to like three to five hundred dollars, and uh, so I went with one of this, like a hundred bucks, hundred twenty bucks. So if it lasts a couple years, it's worth it to me. Uh, the motor that was on here was a nice, it almost looked brand new, Baldor motor, one horsepower, but it was did not have a face on it. And uh, you'll see what I'm talking about there in a minute. But basically, the face is needed to mount the gear reduction drive to and it did not have that. So, uh, I had to get a new motor as well. So I got a one horsepower, 1600 RPM C-faced motor. And uh, <clears throat> I had to do some other work around uh, raising the platform up to accommodate everything. But uh, let's take a look and uh, see what I had to do. So, down at the bottom, you'll see the new motor. You can see the hole at the back and the old motor was facing this way towards me mounted directly to that bottom pulley and uh, there's a fulcrum down here this rod runs straight underneath this platform and there's a spring over there and the weight of the motor would apply the tension to the uh, let's see the top there would apply the tension to the belt. Well, the problem, well, uh, one, I had to reorientate the new motor this way. So I had to raise the platform about three inches to get above this fulcrum because the platform sat below it. And you can see some of the original platform down at the very bottom that's all sitting on top of. So I raised it up and everything, but I, you know, I knew how it worked, but I didn't think about it that much. And I, uh, had to so when I put it all together the weight is more on the this side of the fulcrum so there's no weight to apply the tension to the belts so instead of starting over and trying to fix it you can see down down there I just wedged a 2 by 4 in there to uh, give it tension and it, it works so with that let's uh, crank this sucker up and uh, see it run a bit Well, thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate all the support. I hope to keep this going and make some more videos soon. And uh, please leave a comment if there's something particular that you want to see me do that uh, you've seen on social media or something. Uh, subscribe if you like. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy.